Hello everyone, my name is MJ Vilches and welcome to part 2 of TUPR Challenge. If you're wondering why I'm kind of laughing right now, uh, I already streamed before this today, but a disaster has befallen and I have to do the stream again because I had to look for my pen on the pen tablet and it turns out that my little sister did take it. Good thing I found it right away or now I'm gonna have a little talk with her. But anyways, yeah, it, uh, I found my pen on the pen tablet, and we are gonna keep going with the previous part of with the uh, with our artwork for this month's entry for TUPR challenge, which is also the last entry for TUPR challenge this year. We are gonna be working on a very spoiler spoilery uh, scene here, and if you haven't read the book Gregory the Overlander yes this stream will have some spoilers about it so yeah it's a fair warning if you haven't read the book yet now just uh, I guess avoid this video but yeah for those of you who have uh, read it uh, keep watching because we're gonna be like uh, working on an, an, a scene a very very sad and also really nice scene a perfect way to end book one but yeah I think that's all for the intro Let's just, you know, let's let's go again. Let's let's do this again. So yeah, uh, like I said in the previous part, I'll be doing most of the inking on the background off recording because it's a tedious task. So as you can see, the background is done. Inking for the background is done. So we don't have I don't have to show you uh, the tedious process because it's pretty much like how it is when I did the microwave on the first part. That's kind of like how I did with. They did it with the others, just using the line tool and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm going to disable this for now because before continuing the inking on the other parts, I just want to fix the sketch for Gregor's mom here because as you can see, the arm is not exactly properly pr proportioned. It's kind of, I think, yeah, the arm is very small. So we're going to, we're going to do something about that. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this. I'm going to just... Making sure that we're we were selecting the right layer here in the grease pencil, and yeah, hopefully everything's going well on the stream. Uh, I think the microphone's fine. Yeah, I think it is. So we're good. So let's just go and redraw Gregor's mom's arm here because it's not properly proportioned. It's too small. I think it needs to be. Oh. I need to use the pen tool. I mean, a pencil tool for this one. Just add a bit more to it. Bit. I can make it more, uh, I guess, fatter. Because previous arm is kind of, it's, it's too small for a mom's arm. It's like a child's arm. Or, you know, for, too small for an adult arm. So right now... Just gonna do something like that. Draw the guide first right here because Ma, uh, Gregor's mom's arm, whose name is Grace. And that's something that's th stated in the book. And I guess the fans decided that uh, Gregor's dad's name is Lee. I think that could work, but it's not a very Filipino name. And like I said, I decided that Gregor's dad is a Filipino for my adaptations. So, yeah, I'm probably gonna pick like a Filipino name for Gregor's dad. So I'm just gonna draw a clasping hand right here. I'm gonna turn on the kitchen for now. Uh, not the kitchen, the table. Just so I know where to position the hands properly. So that, it's like that. One of my weaknesses when drawing clothes is drawing a nice looking crease. I'm not really great at doing that. Drawing a crease. But 
But we'll see what we can do there. Just gonna do something like this. Gonna try to draw a proper hand clasped together. Cause I think Gregor's mom here is praying. It kinda looks like that. So Yeah, something like that I think will work. I think that's a nice proportion already. Just gonna fix the clothes here. Maybe add a line there. There are, are there are really great artists who's so good at drawing creases. I'm not one of them. So my creases here are just yeah, I guess decent enough, but not the best. We're not the best out there. Something like that, I guess, for the leg. And the rest. So, Gregor's mom and the table will be one layer, will be on the same layer. So I think we're good there. So now I think uh, we're ready to do some inking. First on Gregor's mom right here and then the table. So now I can lock this again. I'm gonna go create a new grease pencil object. I'm gonna go object mode. I'm just gonna select the background here. Which is right there. I guess that's fine. I'm actually gonna put the cursor right on the table. And try and draw right there. So shift A, I'm gonna add grease pencil right on the 3D cursor. I'm gonna move grease pencil, this grease pencil object to G pencil collection. And name this subject. Because this is our subject. <clears throat> so yeah, hey there, M hey there, M buddy. Welcome to the stream. I'm gonna turn off the background for now because we wanna be able to see this clearly. So now we're in subject. I'm gonna add a new layer. Call this line, and then I'm gonna grab the material, the ink material. Now we're gonna do some drawing so this the art this, this artwork i'm actually planning it to be more leaning into a black and white color in the end so we might be able to finish this today but not really that sure about that one anyways let's start drawing here looks like i will need to make this smaller probably two will do not sure about that though. Let's look at the kitchen slime. Let's, let's look at the background slime. Why did I turn off? Yeah, I think I need to make the line for the subject thicker. I'm just gonna control Z that. Yeah, hair is not easy, yeah, buddy. Yeah, I too struggle with hair. I will need to go to advanced and set active smooth to 1. And then stroke smooth here to 0. 0.5. So that, you know, it's not shaky. It's not a shaky line. Just a simple line for the ears right there then the face 
I guess a bit of a nose there. And then I'm also uh, gonna draw the hair. Just a bit of curl. So I guess I'm just gonna do like a random curly whirly here. <laughs> curly whirly. Some random curly whirlies. All right there, also here, and also right here. Because that's curly hair. Kind of like like I said in a previous part, it's going to be like a tips hair style, tips hair though, in from home. The one that's voiced by Rihanna. So just something like this, I guess. Will work for Gregor's mom's hair. I am not an expert in drawing hair, so forgive me. If you're great at drawing hair, you can probably give some tips on the chat or the comments. But yeah, I think that works. It kind of gives the illusion that that's a curly hair. Now I'm going to continue with the sl uh, sleeves. Is this one? No, that, that's... Is that a... That's, I don't think that's a sleeve. The sleeve is right here. That's like the neck of the shirt. Just draw something like this for the sleeve. Like that, maybe. Like so, oh. I think that's going through the table right now. That's why we can't see it. So temporarily, we're gonna go to viewport display and set this to in front. We're gonna be turning that off later because that's gonna cause an issue when it bl it's blending with other elements, other grease pencil elements. And since we're gonna be using the uh, 3D object as a reference. We won't really, you know, worry about that. So I just need to draw a nice arm here. Something like that. The other thumb right there because the hands are clasping together. Something like that. And right here. And the fingers. Which are, which are one of the challenging stuff to draw. I think we got it. Probably need to do some editing in edit mode here. I need to bring back the 3D, the, the, view, the pivot point to the median point. There we go. That looks nice. Hey, Merry Christmas, Rachelian. And yeah, and, and, uh, I guess you're going to use the stream as a lullaby to sleep. <laughs> Which is fine, you know. At least, you're, uh, at least I am helping you get some sleep. But yeah, uh, have a good night. It's just the shirt right there. We'll need the control space right here in the viewport, just so that consumes most of our screen here. Hey, Richelion, just need practice, maybe. Drawing is a skill that can be learned through practice. And I'm pretty sure you can do it. You can be better. Or maybe you just think your drawing is lame, but it's actually better than what I have here. That's usually what 
uh, that's usually what you know most artists say about their works and it, it's lame then it's actually already really awesome thanks for coming by Richelion I'm not exactly a blender teacher but you know I'm just trying to share the knowledge that I also learn from those blender teachers and also some knowledge that I you know kind of figured out myself whoa yeah you do need to get some sleep Richelion 3 a.m. is oh, I don't think I can stay up till 3 because then I'd be too tired the next day or wake up so late. The Underland Project is uh, still, uh, it's kind of in hiatus right now as I, as December came. But I'm actually still at sequence 1 rendering. I'm in the rendering stages right now. And I'm rendering sequence 1 and still figuring out how to properly do the visual effects for that one. And then after that, sequence 2 won't have that much of visual effects. So I'm just going to be rendering probably in January. It's gonna be lots of rendering and yeah it's gonna be released in next year definitely next year and that's also gonna be hyped up so much by uh, the journey to awesomeness videos yeah those are very old versions but I think still usable you can still make some decent artworks with them because you know it's not really in the software, it's on the artist. For this part, I guess I'm gonna use uh, this tool right here. Just do something like this. And that will make it really easy for us. And the line really clean, which is what I want for this part. Because it's like laying on the seat right there, and that's supposed to be like a clean line so just gonna go like that and but he's definitely gonna stay stay up until three because he's playing a lot of apex legends <laughs> sorry I'm buddy I'm announcing it to four people right now <laughs> four concurrent viewers <laughs> Which I think should be fine. I haven't played Apex Legends for a long while now. Probably also need to update it if I ever open it again. Something like that. And like I said, Gregor's mom and the table are just one layer. So I'm gonna be... Thank you so much for doing that, Rachelia. Thanks for following Doodle Nose Productions and all of its endeavors. I'm using an, an Intuos. It's a Wacom in, Intuos Duos S2. I'm not sure if I'm saying that, if I'm like if the order of that name is right, but yeah, it's like Wacom Intuos Duos Two, something like that. And yeah, welcome to the stream, Gavin Downs. By the way, if you guys you know want to chat, you know want to ask some questions on other videos, you, know, you can join my Discord server right here. Um, I even mod I even programmed a doodly bot, which you can you know do some fun stuff with him. It's a bunch of commands that I programmed into this into this guy, and hopefully, uh, right. uh, it would still be up by the end of the year. I think it would still be up by next year, but yeah, join the Discord server. There's a bunch of stuff there. Yeah, it's fine, uh, Rochellian. You know, you gotta. Hey, Gavin Downs. I'm not exactly. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a. Re I'm not a rich boy. <laughs> if this tablet breaks down, I don't think I'll be able. To be able to replace it right away. Also, I'm using a laptop. I've been wanting to upgrade, but I can't because I don't have any. I don't. I don't make that much money on this thing. I mean, look at it right now. There's only four of you. 
Oh, out of 5,000 subscribers, only four are watching right now on a stream. But then again, I have been very inconsistent with my content, which just recently, I just recently kind of like solidified. I think last year I solidified the content through the Journey to Awesomeness initiative. So yeah, it's kind of my fault that not all of my subscribers are watching right now. But yeah, I think by next year everything will kind of stabilize. I don't know. Not sure. I'm not really an export. No, this is not a Cintiq Rachelion. Uh, this is just like that small, a small, it's a small tablet. Very small tablet. I think I have a video in the channel called My Ultimate Gear. And I showed it there, how it looks. It's not really a very expensive, it's not one of those Wacom tablets that are very expensive. Definitely cannot afford a Cintiq. Definitely. <laughs> so yeah. Just gonna try and finish this whole table scene right here in one hour hopefully and also probably include Gregor and his dad and Boots right here but yeah what's gonna take more time actually is this table because you know flooding out these lines oops I thought I was using the line tool there yeah, I'm gonna go first draw the the leg of the table here because it's like in front of Gregor's mom's leg and we need to draw the war the, the lines that are on top of uh, the others before moving on to the ones that are so I'm, uh, this part is actually off camera already but I'm still drawing that because I might want to do like a like a small zooming in animation for posting it as a video on Instagram or something like that So yeah, drawing with a mouse is painful, although I did force it back then, but it's not really drawing. It's like, it's drawing the, like a sketch or a, a ink version of my drawing first on paper and then scanning that and then cleaning it up in GIMP and Inkscape. I think I made a tutorial on how to do that as well. But now that I have a tablet, I just draw straight into the computer because it's just a faster process as opposed to like having to draw traditionally and then having to scan it and then cleaning it up a lot of details are gone actually by doing that so yeah, and I'm just full-on digital because it's just easier I mean traditional is great but if you're like me who's creating content by himself you gotta you gotta you know you gotta find ways to save time so that you don't spend too much time just, you know, drawing. So for this part right here, I think what I can do is duplicate. Just duplicating stuff. So I'm gonna start with this one right here first. Something like that. Like this, and like so. Probably can just draw this part right here, like that. And then I'm gonna go tab into edit mode, select all of these lines right here. I'm gonna go for the line select so it's easier to select each line. I'm gonna shift D and just duplicate it for this part. Probably do, probably have to do some adjustments. Definitely have to do some adjustments. I'm gonna go back to here and since we have proportional editing on that's just works I guess so 
So yeah. I think you can also sculpt with the mouse. I also I actually prefer sculpting with the mouse. Because it just lags like crazy when I try to sculpt on tablet. It's the only reason. If I don't lag using a tablet when sculpting, I'm probably gonna use a, ta uh, a tablet, but I lag. I just don't have a powerful computer to handle sculpting for now. So there we go, the chair. Donuts, donuts! Oh yeah, if you go to my server, their Discord server, and you type "do nuts," it gives you. Uh, that's not a good example. I guess I'm gonna have to type it again. Do nuts, and a donut will come out. This is a somebody's request. And when we want to stream, he requested that I model a quick donut, and a well, donut comes out. And there we go. Jane Doe also type "do nuts." <laughs> Let's see if we get a proper donut. Come on, come on, come on! Give me a proper donut. Oh. Okay, we made the bot tired. I guess I'm going to have to uh, try that again later. Or you guys can join the Discord server and try it yourselves. The link should be in the description below. So yeah, that's one of the things that my uh, Discord bot can do. The doodly bot. I actually plan to add more if I have, if I get time to program him again. The doodly bot. But yeah. I guess I can try it. Do nots again. Uh, there. This is M buddy, by the way. The scary flyer. Let's try do nots again. See if. Why is the. Why is. Come on. Oh well. Looks like uh, do nots doesn't want to show you the, the other, more beautiful looking donut that I created. That I modeled. Well, I actually can show it to you here in the stream because I actually added it here. See, there's donuts. I'm eating donut while it's a Blender donut. I actually didn't follow Blender Guru's tutorial because it's so easy to model a donut. Donut. Here we are again. Can't pronounce it properly, but yeah, it's just you know I created this whole scene. And if you watch Journey to Awesomeness, you'll know which part that is. But then again, that's not in the video. I just kind of created like a scene with a donut on it. A, a, a donut. Don't. Uh, it's a, we find it difficult to pronounce. Donut. Brains. Especially on a stream. And I'm saying donut. It's like it's a struggle to say it. But anyways, yeah, it's still 28 minutes and I'm gonna be doing this in within an hour. I'm gonna try to finish as much as I can in an hour. We'll see. You can do it, Richelian. Just, you know, just... Uh, one of the th hurdles, I think, to get through when learning Blender is just, you know, to take away that, that laziness, I guess, or just... That reluctance to believe that you can do it. Because I really believe that anyone who has Blender, has computer, and are capable of, you know, creating something, even just a simple model, can do more. You just have to stop stopping yourself from doing it. Because the only thing, the only one that's stopping you from doing whatever it is you need to do as an artist is, I think, yourself. You're just limiting yourself, I think. I'm not sure. I'm, not, I'm just that's just me saying it. That's just what I think, and that's what I've seen happen to me or I've experienced. I just keep saying that you know this is so difficult, this is so difficult. But then when I actually try doing it, it actually turns out to be simple, simpler than I thought it would be. One of the key things too is to find the right workflow for you. And just recently, after creating, after animating, uh episode one of the Underland project after animating a bunch of shots for that uh, it kind of click on me how simple animation I actually hated animation when I started animating for episode one of the Underland project but then as I just pushed myself to keep animating 
it became simpler and simpler and I've s slowly developed a workflow that works and now helps me uh, animate more complicated scenes for the Journey to Awesomeness videos. So yeah, if you haven't watched Journey to Awesomeness, by the way, just head on over to my main channel and watch all of the episodes so far, including the Doodle Logs. So yeah, the Journey to Awesomeness videos, shorts, and Doodle Logs are connected to each other. They're just kind of different format because the, Doodle, Doodle, the Journey to Awesomeness shorts are like in a short film format, while the Doodle Logs are more on a video presentation format. But they are connected, the story is connected. And soon there will be Doodle Log 005, which will have some intense fight scenes. It's kind of intense, considering what I've done so far for Journey to Awesomeness. But yeah, they're gonna be. Re I think I think you're gonna like them. All done in Blender, using Eevee, etc. But yeah, the Underland project will be released next year. I am going to be announcing the final date when I reach. Uh, post-production stage right now I'm still in production stage still rendering which is which is still part of uh, production stage I think the rendering stage but yeah I'm rendering shots because I'm already done animation I still need to refine some animations for for it but yeah it will come out next year definitely I cannot prolong it further it needs to be released next year or never. That's just what I think about that. And we're all gonna be watching it together, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully because I'm hoping that you guys who are here would still be there during this this the premiere. Because it's gonna I'm gonna premiere it on my main channel. You're gonna learn to love nodes, Richelion. You just have to just keep keep using it. You know, keep practicing with it, and it will just snap suddenly. It's easy because I used to hate animation as well. I there was a point where I was gonna give up on it, but I just you know I just pushed myself. I kept animating, and then there we go. Here we are. I just don't want to keep animating. I want to keep making more animations because finally I've managed to uh, figure out a workflow to do it. So let's just finish this lines right here. Hopefully I'm going to be done with all of the inking in this stream. And tomorrow might be the last stream for this year. And then I'm going to be seeing you guys next year. Where a bunch of stuff will be coming out. Episode 1. And then the Journey to Awesomeness adventure will progress more. It's a bunch of stuff that I'm planning that I really want to show you guys. But I'm just going to keep my mouth shut for now. But hopefully you guys would still be there to see it. But yeah. If you have any questions, just ask in the chats and stuff. I think the first time I used Blender, I was just really excited. Because back then, I tried to study Treatise Max. I actually have a huge book about it, but my computer can't handle it back then. So I gave up on it and then I found out about Blender, tried to do some models and I was surprised that my computer can actually handle it and I can actually make stuff with it. And that's when I just never stopped trying to learn it because you know it it, it really just made my dream possible. I have actually given up on becoming a 3D animator back then but because of Blender. Because of Blender. You know, I tried it out again, and now I'm at this point. And hopefully I could get even further, you know, get to awesomeness. 
to reach the awesomeness, which just which just means just the freedom to do this thing without the worry of money. That's actually what awesomeness is in my journey to awesomeness. Just being able to reach a point in this kind of career where you can just keep creating content without worrying about surviving the harsh world. <laughs> the freedom. So yeah, just working on stuff. And yeah, I got a bunch of contents that I really want to show you guys. Some uh, some original stories as well that I want to share. Which soon I will soon I will be sharing as a comic, probably. Hopefully I'll be able to do that. But yeah, I gotta start making a comic. Because I've been like working on that for ever since I'm at sixth grade I think I've been working on that comic since sixth grade and it's gonna be hopefully it's gonna be awesome it's there's actually a lot of nodes for in in, in blender are you talking about like material nodes Richelian? Your object becomes black because that really happens when you don't add a shader. You just connect a node and stuff, but yeah. Nodes are tricky. But once you figure out I think I suggest you guys watch CG Matter when it comes to setting up nodes because he's got a bunch of tutorials. I think it was the default cube channel. He's got a second channel called the default cube, which has more slower, more detailed tutorial. Compared to his tutorials in CG Matter, which actually more of a meme, I think. More on a meme format. But yeah, CG Matter, the default cube. He's got a really great tutorials for node setup. Sometimes it can be confusing though if you're not that uh, versed on the interface of nodes. Yeah, a lot of us are kind of dumb in this thing but uh, if you're using blender you're not exactly that dumb because blender it's pretty pretty complicated and like uh, except now it's not that complicated because it's got a more friendly user interface I think I mean, a more user friendly Yeah, when it comes to 3D animation, CGI, actually a bunch of setting up that needs to be done. So you gotta be prepared for that. You gotta prepare your mind and your heart for that. Because there's it's gonna be a tedious endeavor. And laziness is going to be your enemy. Procrastination is fine though, I think. It helps. It helps ease the pain. Because it is painful. <laughs> uh, no, not CG Cookie. CG Matter. CG Cookie is different. CG Cookie is. Uh, uh, I don't really watch his tutorials that much, but. Yeah. CG Matter. CG Matter is still different. He makes a bunch of, like, really nice VFX related. Uh, Tutorials on CG on the CG Matter channel and also really nice node uh, tutorials on the Default Cube channel. Yeah, version two point five is. I haven't even used that one. I think I started at two point six. Yeah, maybe hard to believe, but they did make movies with it a bunch of people made that did stuff with the previous versions of blender which is really impressive considering that it's i think it's kind of clunky lots of stuff interface is not that great but it works so that's nice so 40 minutes i don't think we're gonna be able to finish inking the whole thing Within 40 minutes, within an hour. 
it should load fast because it doesn't exactly have that much as much uh, features as blend the current versions of blender have I think but then again I never tried opening I think I only tried opening like the very the oldest version like the first version and I didn't even this I didn't even do anything I just kind of like explored a bit and then not use it <laughs> So I'm just going to delete some points here. Grab some points right there. Yeah, Blender has come a long way and I'm very, very thankful to the developers who keeps on working on it. Because they really did uh, allowed me to be able to make 3D animated films even if I'm just alone. A bunch of free softwares like Caden Live and Kurita and GIMP. That's kind of my workflow right now. I don't use Adobe products anymore. Because I really want to push the only free software workflow thing. And all of the videos that I've that you've watched ever since 2017, I think, here in the in the channel and also in the main channel, all done using only free and open source software. Before, I thought you'd have to spend tons of money to be able to do something like this, but yeah, you actually don't have to. Yeah, Elephant Dreams, I think, is about... It's more on like... Yeah, it's difficult to explain. I think it's more dealing with like inside your mind kind of thing like emo dealing with his own because you think they're manipulating the place based on their mind how and how powerful the mind is and if you have a dark mind the place will like evolve the place will like change according to whoever has the most powerful mind i guess Yeah, Elephant Dreams, despite its really weird nature, still a great achieve achievement in the Blender Foundation thingy. In the Blender community. I can extrude this, actually. Just do that. Best thing about lines in Grease Pencil, kind of like working on a 3D line, like in the, like a line in Blender. Let's go back to draw mode. I'm using a mouse right now because it's easier to use this line tool using a mouse as opposed to using a tablet. At least that's just what I think. And considering the fact that you that they made it using the oldest version of Blender, just being just the thought that they've done it, even with the limitations of the software back then it's still really awesome but one of the like blender open movies that really inspired me to like use blender is Sintel because they even used uh, blenders internal renderer to render that thing back then and also back then I even planned on uh, using blenders internal renderer to render the, the underland project but I had to switch to cycles because of that time where Ton announced that they're not going to be supporting. They're not going to. They're going to be taking away Blender internal in Blender. So yeah, I just decided to switch to cycles because I don't want to have. I don't want to give myself a huge headache later on in the production. Yes, yeah, Sintel, definitely. Really awesome. I think it's also directed by uh, Colin Le Levy. Or Colin... Yeah, I think it's directed by Colin Levy. The one who directed uh, that also really nice sh uh, proof of concept short that he made. 
and also directed Tears of Steel. Oh, I, no, Tears of Steel was directed by that other guy. What is what is his name again? Oh man, I forgot his name. Uh, what was his name? What was his name? Forgot his name. Really sorry. The one, the other guy is also great at doing visual effects stuff in Blender, CGI stuff in Blender. I think it's his artwork that is in the current versions. Uh, no, it's not. It's not anymore. Sintel was rendered in Blender internal, not Cycles. That's why it's so amazing. Yeah, even Big Buck Bunny was internal. Yeah, Laundry. Yeah. Laundromat was great. I think it was at Laundromat, Laundromat where. I think it's still in Big Bu Big Buck Bunny. They already achieved like the pixel level kind of th kind of quality in, in terms of rendering. But I think it was it it started more when the laundromat came out. I think that's when I saw that really really looks great. You guys should also check out Peter Franz. He's also making like really well, kind of gory stuff in Blender. But also really great VFX stuff. And he's also a member of the Corridor Crew, which is one of the channels that actually inspired me to, you know, start my own YouTube channel. If you guys don't know about them, better check them out. Corridor, the Corridor Channel and the Corridor Crew Channel. Blender movies, Blender open movies are really dark. I think that's what they always came from. Even that run, the coffee run, that was a, also a dark one. Despite its like, uh, despite its like cartoony nature, Blender open movies are pretty dark. I think the one that's not that dark is the barber one. Agent three two seven. Yeah, I think, I think so too. Agent, I, I think it was Agent Three Two Seven, or I don't know. I don't know the number. I'm not exactly sure about the number now. Yeah, Peter Franz is one of the members in the Corridor Crew. If you guys don't know, and he uses Blender. If he's working on a VFX on a Corridor video, it's most likely made using Blender. The other crewmates, though, they're still using uh, Maya. They're still using it. I guess it's fine to use both. Depending on your workflow. But hey, if you just want to use Blender, like me. It also wouldn't hurt your workflow. I think. I'm probably just biased. Then again, I am a Filipino who lives in a country who's not exactly that rich. And I think for the industry, for like the 3D animation industry in our country, to, for it to like possible to be to reach the Pixar level or to at least, you know, compete on the industry stand with the industry standard stuff. I think switching to like a free open source workflow really works well. Or companies and that's what I'm trying to like promote here in our country for people to start using blender and other free programs to create content so that the issue of having to buy you know software or you know the issue of not being able to publish because you're using a, a pirated software that issue will be just it's not gonna be an issue anymore
because yeah I think that's what's stopping right now because it's always about you know the government not giving budget to filmmakers the government not giving enough budget for animation and stuff like that it's always budget 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 and it, yeah it is problem but it's also but yeah you know, that's kind of why I switched to a none a zero a, a, like a zero budget filmmaking setup so that it's no longer an issue and the issue now will be skill the one that's gonna stop you from creating would be your own willingness to do it because the software is there available for free there's a bunch of software you can use I guess the hardware will we also have to invest on that one because that's also a struggle for me but yeah just the software just to remove the f the factor of having to pay a monthly subscription on a software that's what I want that's what I want to get rid of no maybe if you want to start uh, I don't I really I don't agree with you Gavin on that one because uh, pirating is not good also there are developers who worked hard to create that software for you guys to use and not being able to pay for them is just awful as an artist to do so if you can buy those softwares if I can I'm actually I actually want to give support to the blender team but yeah, I'm more than willing to give something for the ones who's doing it for free than the ones who's charging me a lot. But yeah, if you want to start practicing, maybe you can pirate those software so that you can... Like when you want to work on a company that uh, requires you to use that software, you've already learned it, even though you don't own it. But you gotta make sure that later on you're gonna have... When you are making some money with using their software you have to buy it you have you just have to buy it i guess it's more honor honorable to do that as an artist i think that would be a great respect to those people who made your life easier by developing the software that makes art creation you know with ease that help you make arts with ease so yeah, when I can, when I earn enough doing this, I, re I really want to give support to the blend to Blender by buying like one of those, like uh, subscribing to that monthly thingy. I guess that's what's great about Blender is that your your willingness you you'd be willing to like spend some money for it because of how great it is and it's for free, as opposed to being forced to pay for something so expensive but then again a lot of companies require you to use those software so if you are aiming to like want to be hired on like Disney or something or other like well-known animation companies you're gonna have to learn Maya, 3D, Smax, all those old Autodesk and Adobe products. But that's something that I want my own company to not have to require others. It's gonna be an open source workflow. That way, we'd be making more money and I'd be able to pay the employees more than having to spend money on a software I guess that's I don't know that's just a theory never actually experience having to pay someone to do something for me because I can pretty much do everything mostly by myself Yeah. It's really difficult to make money as a filmmaker, I think. There are people who are lucky enough to actually manage to make it, but it's mostly, I think, really dependent on 
a tinge of luck and also a bunch of connection to already famous people or just really great at coming up with ideas that a lot of people will love and being in this kind of industry for so long it's very difficult to find that sweet spot where you love what you're doing but also people love it you know lots of people love it to a point where just by them watching you can already survive the world <laughs> because you're earning enough to live just by doing the stuff that you love which is not exactly a luxury that everyone has including myself it's still a struggle to keep going but I keep going because I think I think I'm going in a pretty good direction here hopefully I am <laughs> I'm just really hoping that after I release episode 1 it starts for me but I'm not not that sure about that either <laughs> oh boy dreams I really just want to have that freedom to make stuff without having to worry about money etc and that's what the journey to awesomeness is all about I guess just reaching that point in this journey of mine Just to reach a point of freedom. It's not even about fame or or money. I just really want to make films forever. Share stories of awesomeness and stuff. If, if money is not an issue, I'd be like doing this without worry. Without anxiety. <laughs> Rachelian, have you tried have you tried learning other software? Because I, I I believe learning any software is challenging. So it really just it's really down to your determination to learn it. Then again, there are software that are easier to use. But I think in C CG in general, if you're learning CG in general, it's really gonna be challenging for you. If it's just photo, manip uh, photo manipulation, it may be easier because there are apps now where you can do that. Even video editing. There are apps in your phone. You can just video edit your phone now. Even my own... Uh, even animation. Animation. Just animation. Just 2D animation. There's Flip a Clip, which is easy to use. Even my own little sister did her own quick animations with it. She was able to do it. But yeah, when it comes to 3D, I don't think it will be easy. I mean, there are software that will probably allow you to immediately animate a character by using some libraries of animations and 3D anime, 3D character assets. But if you really want to customize your own characters for your own film, really lots of studying involved. Nice. There are people who don't like learning software stuff. I mean, my little sister is also great at singing, but she doesn't like playing games, like computer games. She wants to like play like an actual playtime with actual toys, not not like you know, not, not in games, not in computers. Maybe she'll she'll grow and learn it. As well to play computer games she just doesn't like video games she likes playing with friends you know interacting with other people which is something that <laughs> I kind of don't like I want to stay at home just make stuff in my room <laughs> on a computer <laughs> Oh, I do hope I'm one of those people, Rachelian. 
I do hope I'm not killing your ears right now because of my voice. I mean, you're here, so I guess I'm one of those people <laughs> who's not killing your ears because of their voice. I try to make my videos as entertaining as I can, but I can't really be like CG Matter or CG Cookie. I don't want to be. I don't want to try and act like a character that that's kind of too fake. As much as possible, I try to just like show, like just uh, a genuine side, I guess, of me. More positive side. I do have a negative side. I think everyone has, but. Showing that on a video is just rude, I think. I want you guys to, you know, not have to deal with my drama. So, I won't, I won't be sharing any of those, even on my server. That's why I don't allow any kind of ranting there in the server. So that there's no drama. <laughs> Have a good night, Virtualian. I think you really do need to sleep now. And I think I'm just gonna finish this chair and then I'm also gonna end the stream. Or maybe, maybe, you know what? I'm gonna end the stream right here. It's already an hour and two minutes. We've managed to ink Gregor's mom here. And just, I'm gonna be doing Gregor's dad and everyone here in the foreground off recording. And then uh, tomorrow we're gonna do some finalizing. And tomorrow will be the final stream for this uh, for this uh, entry for TUPR challenge and also the final stream for this year. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys again next year as the streams will come back and, and lots more awesome contents will come out. But yeah, that's all for now. Thank you so much for everyone who watched the stream to Richelian, to Gavin, to Mbuddy if you're still there. Thank you so much for watching. To everyone here, to the five concurrent viewers, thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys here watching. Even if you're not chatting, it's fine. Yeah, thank you so much. So, yeah, I think that's all. Hopefully, I've shared enough Blender knowledge for you guys. Like I said, I'm not really doing a tutorial. I said it in a previous video. I probably did not say it in this one, but right now I'm saying it. I'm not, I'm not creating tutorials. I'm just sharing to you guys my own workflow. So that maybe maybe you'll get something from it. Maybe you're not. Or maybe you can just share your own ideas and stuff. But yeah, I think that's all. Uh, thank you to my Kofi givers, to Magnolia Weather Shield, the ones who's given within the time period of the Underland Project, to Eric Madriga, Elizabeth Money, Tristan Wintel, Guillermo Gage, and Mbuddy. Thank you so much for supporting Doodle Notes Productions. If you want to support Doodle Notes Productions, go to co-free.com slash Doodle Notes Productions. I also have a Kofi shop where you can download some free assets for Blender. And other stuff, just check out the coffee shop in that link. The shop, my shop page on that link. So you'll see. Um, also, follow Doodle Notes Productions everywhere on the internet. Uh, also, the Doodle Boat if you want to see more stuff here. And yeah, join the Discord server. Uh, join the Discord server right here. Where we you can do some fun command, commands like do nuts. Which finally showed the proper donut. And also do fan mode. Where you can see some stuff that I created. Just, you know, it do help to see some fun commands. And the scared flyer or buddy is now typing something. So yeah, join the Discord server. The link is in the description below. And yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching. My name is... Wait for it, wait for it, MJ Vilches. And yeah. Uh, see you tomorrow on the last stream for 2020.